All right, questions at all on the body language, any of that stuff. Okay, <laughs> so a few quick tips as far as safety. A lot of the information about actual handling and things like that, um, when you get started with training, the volunteer is going to go over with you. So I'm not going to go into all of that, but just some things that are bare, you know, repeating several times for you to hear. Uh, make sure that you always approach the cage correctly. This is a little bit more important with dogs than it is with cats, but with cats, don't we're just go barging up and handling them. Um, with dogs, as I said, forward motion is really confrontational, so you don't want to go at a direct straight angle. So either walk at an angle to the cage or just angle your body as you walk to the cage. I will frequently just go like hip first up to a dog instead of torso first to them. Um, make sure that you always read the kennel card for each animal before you take it out. They all have um, paperwork on their cage that gives you their name and their breed and that kind of stuff, which is important to know. But look for things on, like on cats where it says dislikes restraint. You know, you want to get him out quickly and move him to where he's going and not stand there and hold him. Um, and ideally, don't scruff and do all that kind of stuff. Do the minimum that you need to. Um, look for things like ear infection. If it's a dog with an ear infection, you don't want to mess around too much with putting a leash on and then go, oh, he's a cute little puppy right on its ears. He's not going to like that very much. So look for those things. Um, if in your handling with an animal you discover something that you feel is important to know, make sure that you let a manager know so they can write that on the card. Um, there was a dog and all. It combines a few things, so I can tell you the whole story in a little bit, but there was a dog that I could have more easily avoided a bite. I did avoid it, but I could have more easily avoided a bite if the other employees had noted that she didn't like to have her mouth handled. That in a second. Um, make sure that you greet the animal first. Um, and again, with dogs and cats, both it's important. With cats, go up and put your hand up, let them sniff in the cage, say hello. If they don't come up and approach, it's fine. Open the cage and again from the inside, put your hand there. Um, depending on the reaction, you might be able to put it right up to the nose. You might need to keep it a few inches away. See what the reaction is. Um, even if they're friendly with a cat, I always, after letting them sniff my hand through the bar, I always sniff again inside the cage and I pet them a bit before I just take them out so they know that I'm getting ready to handle them. With dogs, put your hand up again, say hello. If it's a dog who's in a run, who's jumping all over the place, a little trick that you can do is instead of putting your hand up at the top where it's easiest for you, crouch down and put it down at the bottom. If it's a dog who's social and wants to get out and spend time with you, he's gonna stop all that bouncing and sniff your hand. If he keeps bouncing and doing all that, he just wants to get out, which is not a bad thing. It just tells you, is he friendly at this moment or does he have other things on his mind? Okay, just a little bit of helpful information for when you're handling them. Um, again, as we've, I've already said a couple times, trust your gut. If you can't even point out all the things that are making you unsure, your gut's telling you for a reason that it's not safe, so go with it. Um, and don't let other volunteers or employees say, oh, he's fine, he's been out 12 times today, it's no big deal. Um, some animals are not good with particular people for whatever reason. Um, so it might be that he was fine the 12 other times, but he's not going to be fine with you. Okay, so, so go with that. Um, if you need help, ask for it. And that's a getting in or out of a cage, especially with big dogs going into kennels um, and to run. Sometimes they don't want to go back in. And they know that they're 80 pounds and that you can't lift them. So get help to get them back into the cage. Um, keep your eyes on the animals. We already saw the importance of that, making sure you're always watching what's happening with them when you're actually working with them. And especially, it's one thing if the dog's on leash and you're talking to somebody over here, you should still see what's going on, especially if you're in the courtyard and the other dogs around, but especially when you're actually hands-on Make sure you're watching what's going on with that animal. Okay. Um, make sure that you don't go into a room without checking it first. There are windows in all the holding areas. If you look in and see if there's an animal loose, go and get a receiving employee or a manager who's trained to get those animals. Okay. Don't try to get it yourself. Um, and don't go in also, especially if it's a dog, because it could be territorial. Um, another story, we'll tie some things together in a minute. Um, don't force yourself on an animal. So if, again, if they're warning you that they don't want it, then respect that. Um, again, you might need to just kind of come from a different angle, maybe again turn sideways, crouch down, do those things to show that you're not intimidating. Um, but respect that when they say, I don't like how you're going about this right now. Um, don't corner an animal. And this is where I was able to avoid that one bite. There was, a, again, she didn't like to have her mouth handled, so she needed a pill though. Um, had I known she didn't like to have her mouth handled, I just would have put it in some food given it to her. But, so of course I did the whole open the mouth and top pill in, um, but she was tied out on the wall for cleaning. I made sure she was at the end of the leash and then I was a step away from that. Okay? And that's how you should be with any dog who's tied out so that you can get away if they start to threaten you or go after you. By the third time I opened her mouth and popped the pill in when she didn't want it anymore and she lunged at me, she had no place to lunge because she was tied to the wall 
and I had red skin inflammation. Okay, so always think about that kind of stuff. I know you don't want to think about that kind of stuff, but always think about how you're going to keep yourself safe when you're working with them, um, and don't get yourself into a corner either. Um, this is where I can kind of tie in all kinds of stuff here. Um, a dog did get loose in a room, and of course I'm an employee, so I have to go in and try to deal with it. I was with my boss. Um, the dog was territorial, so he came charging at me down the aisleway of the, the room. I turned my back on him, which is kind of a scary thing to do, but that made me less intimidating. So he stopped, and he turned and went after my boss because she went around through another doorway to see if she could get him over there. Um, she did the same thing. I moved. He came after me again. She went to get help. I tried to outsmart him, which isn't going to work, <laughs> but I tried. Um, to see if I could get him to go one direction, I'd go in another, and I'd have his cage door between us then. So as he came at me, I could use the cage door kind of as a shield and also kind of squeeze him then into his cage. Well, he didn't go the way I thought he should, the audacity. Um, so he started to get me into a corner, so I jumped into a run and closed myself into a run. Okay, so. Um, he did not bite me. I didn't have to go to the hospital for stitches. I had on my favorite jeans that day, and he didn't rip up my favorite jeans. Um, so it's, it's much better, you know, get into a cage, get on top of a cage. Obviously, if you can get out of the room, get out of the room. Okay? But if you can't, then, then you do what you can as far as that goes to keep yourself protected. Okay? Um, also, as far as not cornering an animal, let me go back to that quickly. Um, if there's a dog who's in a, a run and not wanting to come out and is at the back of the run, Again, you can try all your, you want to go for a walk, who wants a cookie, let's go to the park, you know, that if you've got your keys on, you're jingled on, that kind of stuff. See if you can get him to come forward. If he won't, please do not go into the run with him. You are now closed in a box with a scared dog. That's a really good way to get yourself bitten. So, again, get help to get him out if you need to. If this is in the adoption room, there's nothing wrong with having the adopters squat down in front of the cage for a few minutes and do all the baby talk stuff and see if they can get the dog to approach them. Okay? Um, if you're seeing that this is happening routinely with one dog, within a day or a couple of days, please let us know because we are doing that dog no favors by keeping it in a room where there's so much traffic and he's just constantly frightened, frightened, frightened. Um, we will take him out, socialize him some more, get him more comfortable before we put him back in the adoption room. Okay. So please let us know if you see anything like that going on. Okay. Um, if you are attacked, despite all your best efforts, if something happens, um, with a cat, if you're holding a cat and it starts to go, just drop it. Just let it go. It's not going to hurt itself. They've got really good riding mechanisms. They're not going to land on their backs or anything like that and, and break their backs. Um, they want to get away from you, so let them go. Okay, if you try to hold on to them, they're going to do major damage to you. If you've got a dog on the leash and he threatens you, um, stop, stand still, don't stare at him. Start waving that leash in front of his face to, again, see if he'll go after that. If that doesn't work, um, you might want to carry a bandana with you and start waving the bandana in his face, baseball cap cleaning gloves that's on the windowsill, anything like that, a sacrifice that he can go after instead of you. If he gets his mouth on that, you drop the leash and get out of the room, okay? Um, and then still, despite all of this, if you're bitten, most bites that happen here are very, very minor. Um, we have first aid creams and all that kind of stuff. Make sure you just turn on the hot water and get some soap and scrub it. Um, don't turn on the cold. You want to kill all those germs, so just scrub it out. Um, if it's more serious and you need to go to the hospital or to your doctor, whatever your insurance does not cover, we will. So we'll take care of that for you. Um, again, it, it's very rare that that kind of thing happens. Um, we have about 300 active volunteers. We get about 10,000 animals a year. We've got 80 employees. So the numbers are going to combine. It has to happen at some point. It's just very, very rare considering how many um, beings are involved in this whole equation. Okay. Um, worst case scenario, if, if a dog bites, also generally the best thing to do is to take it which is probably easiest because they've done studies on this. Our reactions are so slow, the dog is bitten and it's over before we can even go, hey, and pull away. So you're probably going to, but if you try to fight it, most times the dog's just correcting you, and if you pull back, it's like, I didn't get my say, and so he's gonna bite again. So just take the bite, okay? Um, the only time that you don't is if the dog means business, and that usually means that they're climbing up your arm or they're taking you and trying to pull you down, okay? My 15 years, it has never happened, okay? but we want you to be prepared in case it does, because it did happen shortly before I started here. Okay? If that comes about, you fight. But that's, again, we're just wanting you to be prepared in case it happens. Don't expect it.